In this video, I want to be discussing how significant is the death toll for a disaster. And I want to talk to you about this because there are several factors that can go into how much should the death toll describe a storm. Now, I'm going to make a separate video on damage totals because I think that there is um, actually a lot to do with this um, subject matter as well. But I want to first go into death tolls because damage totals, I will need to show you my computer in order to show at least part of the issue with that is. So, death tolls... Uh, in theory, a good indication of how much destruction a storm has caused. However, I find several flaws with using the death toll method. The first flaw is, is the development of nations. Obviously, less developed nations are going to have higher death tolls because they're going to lack the infrastructure, the warning systems, all that stuff in place that is commonly used by um, first world countries to save lives, but they might not have the technology down there. Cyclone Savoha, for example, would not have been as destructive as it was had the storm stalled off the coast of, say, Alabama. Now, I'm not saying that it wouldn't have caused deaths, but saying that it would have caused 270 deaths is a little bit excessive. When you... Um, realize where uh, Svoha was, you'll see why. And when you look at the minuscule damage tolls too, only half a billion, half of which was in Australia, which only saw one death. It actually made landfall unusually far south in Australia, the furthest south of any tropical cyclone in at least 22 years. Oh, look, all the leaves are starting to lose their tree. Uh, all the trees are starting to lose their leaves. However, um, that's not the only thing. Obviously, development of countries is why a lot of times storms in the North Indian Ocean um, Basin ha struggle with higher death tolls. But there haven't been too many recent tragedies, as in recent as in like the last decade. But there's another factor that can be involved in here. And this one, I like to think of, especially with winter storms, as icy road collisions. Sometimes they can seriously accumulate on a winter storm. That doesn't mean the storm is overall that destructive, though. Now, in some cases, they can be. The mid-November 2018 storm, if you lived in New York City or its metro area, you know how bad of a commute it was that night. Some commutes took up to 10 hours long, and New Jersey logged 555 car crashes that afternoon and evening, despite only six inches of snow falling. There was a death in New Jersey, however, there were 10 others in associated with, this, with the system, and I believe its damage total is $350 million. That's a lot of damage. However, the death toll does really strike me, and that's because of a lot of motor vehicle accidents. There were a lot of them that occurred throughout the country, and that's how that toll was able to accumulate. In late February, there was another winter storm that wound up bearing down across the nation. Um, and February 23rd, 24th, kind of, was the most severely affected. Now, the thing is, is that, um, is that this storm was known for causing massive temperature drops. For example, on February 21st, it was 77 degrees in Wichita, Texas. And on February 22nd, it was 62. The next day, it was in the teens with sleet falling. The Northeast, which saw the snow on February 25th, wound up seeing record warm temperatures on February 23rd. This even culminated with a monthly record high in Bangor, Maine of 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and temperatures in some places approached 70, which was very warm for late February. However, the cold front really, really came down that night. 
Um, some places, God is slow as the teens at night. Whereas other places wound up still making it to the 30s. So, even though it was warm, it was raining before, a, 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 a very warm afternoon. But then it was already bitterly cold the next day. Or... Or cold. It was it was a little bit below average by the next day, which helped set up the stage for snowy impacts on February twenty fifth. So, so there were four deaths due to car crashes in Missouri, one in Tennessee, and I believe in Kentucky, a child died on a frozen bridge. But I don't think that was quite a road accident. Now, the seventh death occurred on the 25th uh, due to a car crash on Interstate 89 in Milton, which is in Vermont. So, you can see, though, there's not that much information that's exactly known on the storm. I don't think there's a damage estimate out for it, unlike the mid-February storm. But the mid-February storm lacks a notability of just not having as many car crash deaths, mainly because this storm did predominantly come down as rain owing to the record high temperatures in the lead-up. But because there's not, there's not that many impacts, and I feel like in this case, the traffic collisions do really bring on a notability on the storm, but you can't really judge a storm that way. Because this 7th death storm or the 11th death storm aren't really as notable as some maybe 4 or 3 death storms that simply don't cause as many deaths due to traffic collisions. Now, um, now another case that I would like to look at is, um, is the February 2021 ice storm. That storm only caused $75 million in damage, and while it was part of the lead-up to the, to the massive power failures in Texas, this wasn't really it. And this, st- and this storm got overshadowed by the following storms and the power crisis. And even with 12 deaths, 6 in a car crash through Dallas, it wasn't really that notable. Even a, a, a storm that came down around Black Friday in 2015 that caused 17 deaths kind of lacked that notability. Because they were mainly from traffic collisions. When storms are mainly from traffic collisions, that's mainly from traffic collisions. The death toll kind of matters less. You want more deaths from situations that aren't traffic collisions. If you're trying to prove the notability of a storm, traffic deaths just really ain't going to cut it. So that's a video on why that toll doesn't matter as much as people like to make it out to be. I'm not saying that the death toll is completely irrelevant. And it should be looked at when discussing how impressive a storm was. I'm just saying look at other stuff. The other stuff does indeed matter. But obviously, um, so obviously you can't really base it down on one variable to determine the uh, impacts of an entire storm system. Storms are just kind of more composite like that. They take into consideration multiple variables.